Hello, um, I want to show you a quick and easy way of installing a VFD to your project, especially if it's controlled by Ethernet. Um, now, Grant, I'm not going to show you how to set the IP address, assuming that you may have a 525 that you can dial in the IP address yourself, or you, if you have something like this with a COM 22E, uh, a 22 COM E port added on to a like a PowerFlex 40. I'm assuming you've already seen that or used Boot TP, so just go with it. So, but right now I can go to RS Links, I can go in my Ethernet, and I can see right here that the IP address for a PowerFlex that I want to link to. All right, the IP address, all that fun stuff, and that's important because I'll need to know that because I have to add that to my I/O tree. So if I go into, I create already created a program. And I'm going to click over to Studio 5000. Here it is. And if you look over here along on the controller organization tab, you'll see your IO configuration. And again, if you don't know how to add IO, um, you're going to need to know that if you're going to be in PLC programming. But this is a way to add any type of Ethernet IO, not just VFDs, but basically figure out how is it connected to the processor. So if you have stuff on a card like this up here, this would be local. If it's connected with an Ethernet cord, that would be attached by Ethernet. Uh, and so we've added the distributed I.O. right here that we've been using in class. But if I right click and add new module, um, it's important that if I go back to RS links, if I click on properties, it's going to tell you what type of revision and all that fun and stuff is. That'll come in important later. But this may not give you all the information. It's not telling you that it's communicating via 22COM e, um, Ethernet port. But if I type in PowerFlex 40, you'll see the 40PE. This is important. I have a 40, but notice that it's AC drive via 22COM e port. Very important. Now, if I just typed in a 525, this will be by com E or embedded Ethernet. This is the way you would add that. Um, but I'm going to just do a PowerFlex 40 E, and I'm going to hit Create. And this is where things will be easier in a second. So as I create the drive, as I create the drive, it may take a second. It's going to add it to my I.O. chart. In this case, it's inst installing something. It's probably just installing Drive Explorer because I haven't pulled it up on this new build. Um, I recently upgraded to Windows 10, so it's not installing. But this will give you a sense of something you might see. So. It's installing, but again, we just went to the Ethernet, right-click new module, found our select module type, and just typed in PowerFlex 40. It's important you know your hardware. So now it's pulling everything up. It's a one-time process, but you might see this, so there you go. So now it's loading everything in, and you should see it over here on the Ethernet tree. At least I hope so. Give it a name. For class, I always say VFD because I'm lazy and only want to remember three letters. But you got to type in your IP address. So in my case, 10.130.95. Um, here, this is where I would change my um, revision type. And if you notice, the other said, said, you know, two. Um, you can do all this, but I'm going to show you the easy way to make sure you set everything up right, okay? Now, you might want different configurations for your program, that's fine, but this stuff can be a pain to sync together. So here's what I would recommend. Before you hit okay, go to drive, okay? And if you see this button right here, this one right there, Let me highlight it. So this button right there. It's going to, if I hover my mouse over, it's going to say upload parameter data. Remember, we upload, we're taking the data 
from the drive and putting it in there. I would recommend doing that first. You can always change your parameters later, but at least it's getting your communication set up properly. Um, so if I go in, I find my drive, hit OK, and it's going to connect and bring in all your stuff, just like we would do a PLC. But we're uploading everything. OK, and if it sees, if it sees issues, it's going to correct it for you. This is why I recommend uploading because you might have some revision wrong or, you know, so it says right here that difference is found. If you don't have the differences, if you don't have everything right, it's not going to communicate when you download. So I would just upload it, set everything up, and then you can change it to your blue in the face. So now everything's good. It changed everything. Everything's matched. I hit OK. And, and if I hit close, everything's hunky-dory. And now to program, all I need is momentary signals. I do not need a sealant circuit. That's the great thing about a drive. So MBIP1, just creating some bools. MBIT. You know what? Let me just uh, examine off. And then this is going to be, if I look through my tag tree, you should see VFD in, VFD out. Well, since this is an output, if I expand my output, look, a start and a stop. There's my start. And there's my stop. And all I need is a momentary input. Now, the other thing you'll need is, you know, there's a, is you need to make, and I'll go online and show you this, make sure it's set up to point this out. But, um this is all the program i need to start and stop i might also want to go into vfd input and make the command frequency uh, command frequency output frequency and just make that 600 or put a move command to 600 actually let me just do that just make a move command even though you may want it to be 60 hertz there's a there's an assumed decimal point right here when you send things so you don't so when you want 60 you really send 600 because the decimal points kind of assume there and then i find you know output you know find my vfd output to be command frequency and it's an integer all right just do that to make sure it turns on all right now i download And fingers crossed. When I go online, I'll show you the other parameter. You need to make sure that's active so that you can remote start this. Um, hit yes. And now if I hit toggle bit, you should hear clicking and you should see numbers going up in the background back here. Now this doesn't need to stay on. I'm just making it easy because I don't really want two bits. And if it toggle, it's now going down like it's stopping. And everything's hunky dory. Now what when I go to down here to my power flex and open it, I can go online. Sorry, my email is blown up. I can go online and I want to show you the parameters that you must make true in order to start it remotely. So give in. Now, ideally, your drives are set up this way. That's why I uploaded things. But if I go into Drive, it's correlating with the online drive right now. I'm online. You can tell that by up here. But now it's correlating, seeing what's there. And this is where you now can edit things that, like. Uh, acceleration other fun things or you can program to make those changes as well see i can remember the this stuff but if i go into com and device parameters i can open my device parameters and look there's my ip address there's my subnet mask 
Um, I can reset the module. I can do a bunch of fun little things here. And I can get help for the parameters. If I go into the VFD itself and close it, um, I can go into parameter list for the, the PowerFlex itself, and it's opening up. It's giving me my command frequency, output current. But here's the port that you need to make sure is true. So 36, 36, 37, and uh, 38. You see how I have options? Three wire, two wire, COM port, keypad. If it's keypad, it's the buttons on the VFD itself. If it's um, three wire, then it's a, a, a normal three wire button. Um, COM port. Uh, COM port is the start from the from the VFD, so that's the important thing. You know, uh, um, I don't know what this mob for it is. I'm just not thinking about it. But that's the big one if you want to program things with the PLC, and then keypad if you just want to do things with keypad. All right, COM port, speed reference, same thing. Drive pod, or if you have a potentiometer you want to hook up, either the 0 to 10 volt or 428 milliamp volts. Um, that's how you would do that, or preset frequency uh, that so no one has control over it. Um, but the drive pot or com port, I'm gonna say com port, and then you just hit close and everything's hunky dory and driven and download and all that fun stuff. But if you don't have that it, it change, you're not gonna be able to adjust things. Gotcha. Well, classes are gonna be starting soon, so I gotta get this up downloaded. And if you have any, we'll be able to work with you more in class, but but basically this is all we are looking at let me go back to so again if i hit toggle bit it starts and if i toggle bit it stops and it just needs a momentary and oh well, maybe i'll show you this right now just to show you if i put in a one shot Just to show you, because remember, one shot doesn't need to keep it on. If I toggle the bit, it should start it up, but maybe it won't because I'm annoying. It may not be active enough. All right. But yeah, you really only need a momentary input. You don't need to, you don't need to keep it on. I'll just keep it that way. There's a little. So now I got two memory bits. And if I toggle the bit, stop. It's overriding my start. And and it's stopping. Sorry, I'm just it's still stopping. But if I toggle this bit, it is starting. And it's remaining started with a momentary input. Okay. Cool.